Fantastic. Okay, so um, this is four o four, um, and we are five years. Should we? Do you think we should kick it off, or we should wait a bit for a few more people to join? I think we should wait a bit for a few more people to join. Okay. All right. Um. Okay. So let's just wait till. Uh, Uh, good evening. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining today's session. Um, it's getting started with Figma, and um, we have Dumebi with us to take us through this topic. Um, for and this this topic is particularly important for designers, especially and product people on the product management track, as well as great for developers because again if your team uses um, figma then you should still be able to to use the um to use a software to access drawings assets and all that and that 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 makes the work of a developer easier if um, things have been done properly and um so it's it's a it's a tool that is very important and also um as a developer you might have an idea and you just want to do some quick wireframes out and to test your ideas again, which is something that we really teach in all of our programs, um, in all of our tracks rather. And so Figma is a very, very great tool that I think every one of us, no matter the track, should have a good understanding of, and especially people on the PM track and the design track to master, because again, that is what you primarily, a lot of times, be, um, you'll be using that tool a lot of times. So without any further ado, let's welcome Dumebi um, upstage as she takes us through this hour talking about um, Figma and how to get started with it. Dumebi, you have the floor. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, everyone. So my name is Oduma Dumebi. I'm a graduate of the Puna program and I am a UI UX designer and I'll be your facilitator for today. So the topic for today is getting started with Figma. So first of all, so first of all, we'll look at what we'll be covering today. I'll talk about the de definition of Figma, what is Figma, then we'll look at some of the key features of Figma. Then also we'll look at setting up a Figma account. And I'll also be showing you guys the Figma interface. Then last but not least, I'll also be talking about buttons and how to create simple buttons using auto layouts. So what is Figma? Figma is a cloud-based design and collaboration tool that allows users to create edits, that allows users to create edit and share vector graphics, user interfaces, and websites. Then also, Figma is a browser-based software, which means it can be run on full desktop operating systems such as Mac OS, Windows, Linux, etc., as well as Chrome OS, which makes it easy for users to access and work on their designs from anywhere. Um, and it also has a desktop application, which is available for Mac OS and Windows. Then it also has plugins that can be used to extend its functionality and it's also easy for sharing of designs with stakeholders and clients. Then Figma is widely used by designers, product managers, developers, and other stakeholders in the product development process. So now we'll be looking at the main features of Figma, what Figma actually does and all. So first of all, design. Figma can be used. <clears throat> Figma can be used to create edit designs for both web and mobile apps, and even websites and other digital products. Then also another feature of Figma is the real-time collaboration, which is used, which allows multiple users to work on the same design file at the same time. And also, you can see changes that each member of the team has made 
on that particular file. Then the next feature is prototyping. This feature allows users to create interactive wireframe and mockups of your design, which can be helpful to present your design to team members and others. Then also you can use Figma for design system. You can use it to create and manage design systems. So a design system is a set of usable components and styles that can be used across multiple projects and designs. So a design system includes color palettes, um, typography, icons, components, grids, and the rest. So vector network. Figma has some vector network editing tools, such as shapes like um, rectangle, lines, stars, circle, arrows, and also pencil and pencil. For the pencil, it can be used to make logos, icon, illustrations, and other things. Then for the mobile app, one of the features Figma has is that of mobile app. You can actually download the Figma mirror from your Apple Store or Play Store, which is um, Figma mirror to view your prototypes, like your prototypes live on your mobile devices. Then integrate with other apps. You can integrate Figma with a lot of other apps, mm -hmm. such as Sketch, Adobe XD, Protopy and Invasion. So we'll move to the next section, which is setting up a Figma account. So I'm just going to share that. Yeah. So come, let me open that. Please let me know when you can see my screen. Can you see my screen? Hello? Yes, yes. Yes, I can. Yes, no. yes, we can. OK. So for you to be able to sign up on Figma, you have to log on to Figma website, which is www.figma. Dot com. So if you want to sign up, you can either click the Get Started button, or you can actually get Figma, like you can get the desktop app on Figma, which you go to Product, you go to Downloads, you go to Download, so it's going to download, and uh, that's for the desktop app. So for getting started on Figma, you click here, so once you get the app, you have to like, you can continue with um, your Gmail account or you just create an account. So once that is done, this is how the interface looks like. So it takes you to the Figma dashboard. So right here is the navigation bar. You can get to see, you can get to see, Um, you can search for your file, you can search for team or you can search for people. Then here you can see this is your account. Then you can also access community from here. So um, what community does is you can actually publish your design file so that people can have access to it in the community. Then here on the left hand side is where you view your recent files. And also you can see your draft files and everything here. Then if you want to make any design file, like if you want to add it to your file, and favorite file, you can just hover over this, you click on it, then automatically it's been added to your favorite file. Then also you can create teams here. Then you can also explore community from here. Just go back. You can also explore community. You can also explore your community from here.
Sorry. Sorry, can you still see my screen? Yes. You let me try and open it again. Sorry. Okay. How about now? You buy something. Yes, yes. Okay, you, okay, you can see it now. Yes. So you can explore um fig jam templates here. Uh, then you can also explore community from here. Okay, so you can also explore community from here. Then also the notification, you can also check for notification. Then here, you can see your internal profile, all contributors and everything here. Then plugins, then you can also access community from here, then your accounts. You can either change your name, your email address, your password, language, and all. Then you can also get the desktop app from here or either add another account or you log out. So now we're going to create a new design file so we can get to see the Figma interface and all. So I'm just going to click on this. So once it opens, it brings you here. So this is what you see when you click on a new design file. So this is the canvas here. This whole place is the canvas. This is where you create, edit, and view your design. And also it's a place where you like place your text, shapes, images, and organize them. So this is basically where you spend most of your time on. Then we have the layers. This is the layer panel, then also this hamburger, this is where, this is the menu. You can either go back to file here. You can search for files, new design file, new Figma jam file. You can edit, you can view. Then you can see some of the shortcuts here also. Then you can actually get the desktop app also from here. Then in help and account, you can see the help page. You can see the keyboard shortcuts here. So if you want to access any, if you want to access any of the shortcuts, you just come here. So these are all the shortcuts in Figma. Then the next tool we have is the move tool. Then we have the region tool, which contains frame, section, and slice. So for the frame, once you click on frame or the shortcut F, you see some frame presets here. You see phone phone frames, you see tablets, desktop, presentation, watch, paper, and social media. So I'm just going to select the Android frame, um, Android large frame. So 
this is where you see the frame in your canvas. So another thing about frame is, it is very important to name your frames because it helps to keep your design organized and easy to understand. And it also helps your like team members to identify a frame quickly and also the content of the frame. So it's advisable to also to always name your frame. So the next one we have is the section. For the section, okay, this is how a section looks like. You can change the color of the section and all. For the section, is used to organize your frames. So you can actually make this bigger. You can put your frame in the section. Make it really big so that your frame can sit properly in it. So that's for section. Then this is the shape tool. This is your rectangle. It contains the rectangle, lines, arrow, ellipse, polygon, stars. And also you can place images and videos from here. Then this contains the pen tool and the pencil tool. Then this is the text tool also. Then this one, these are the resources where you can actually get components that have been used in this file. You can access your plugins. So these are some of the plugins I've already downloaded here. Then you can also download plugins from community. Then this is your hand tool for moving around in the canvas. Then also this is your comments tool. You can use the um the comment tool is used for making comments in your design file. You can also get feedback requests from team. So let me say you want to comment on this, you can like write something, then you send it, then your teammates sees, then your teammates sees your comments, then your teammate replies. So after your teammate has replied, it's always advisable to resolve the comments. So resolve them. If you want to see like resolved comments and other comments made in the past, you just come here, then you click on show resolved comments. Then you see comments that have actually been made on that particular file. So for the next one, this is, you can name your design file here. So let's just give it a name. Pick my interface. So we move to the right hand side. So here, this is um, this is your icon. I'm the only one on this particular file. But you can once others join on this file, you see their icons, their avatars displayed here. So this you can actually make calls on Figma too. You see the headset icon here for you to make calls. Then also you can share your file. You can also play the prototype and you can also zoom. You can zoom in, you zoom out and zoom to fit. Then this is the background. This color is the background of this canvas. So you can actually change it from here. You can change it to any color of your choice. Any color you wish to change it to. Then you can also see your local styles. You can create local styles. You can create text, create colors, effects, and grid. Then you can also export. You can either export as a PNG, JPEG, SVG, or P uh, PDF. Then you can actually preview before you export. Okay. So when you click on a particular frame, you can see the that is the X and Y. You can see the position of the frame. You can actually see the width, the height of the frame, and also the angle. You can actually rotate here. 
this you know. Then also you can give it some corner radius. If you notice when you do this, let me zoom in a little bit. When you give it corner um some radius, see. Then also auto layout here. Auto layout it allows you to create a flexible and responsive layout that adapt to different screen size. Then also the layout bridge, it helps you align objects within a frame into columns and rows. So this is how it looks like. You can actually set it to columns, you can change to rows, and all, but we won't be going into this today, maybe in some other time. Then you can turn it off, or you can turn it off, or you just delete. Then layer, then you can change the feel of this frame. Let's say, for example, you want to change the feel. You can change the feel of the frame. So I'll just put it back like this. You can add stroke. Let me just use um a shape to explain it better. Okay. For this rectangle, you can change you can change the feel of the rectangle to any color. To any color of your choice, you can change the film. Then also you can add some strokes to it. Let me say five. Okay. Then you can also change the color of the stroke. Then you can change it if you want it centered. If you want it inside, if you want it outside, mm -hmm. then you can turn it off or you delete. Then for effects, we have drop shadow. We have drop shadow, we have layer blur. We have background blur. We have inner shadow and all. Then you can actually come here to set the blow of the, the x axis and the y axis also then you can spread the blow and not uh, won't be going into this today then you can actually export also so now we move into the last part which is the um, button so we're going to be creating a button using auto layout so first of all a button is an element which allows you to take action and make decision they are used to initiate an action like um, submitting a form, um, navigating to a new page. Examples of some buttons are, okay, book now button on a reservation app, continue, next and proceed. Yeah. Then buttons can be found on dialog forms. They can also be found on modals, cards, or toolbars. So some of the type of buttons we have are ghost buttons, which are also known as um, outline buttons. We also have the fill button, elevated button, and text button, and also the floating action button, extended floating action button also. So please, can you, I, I feel I'm talking to myself, I don't know why. Can anybody hear me? Yes, so uh, we can hear you. Okay, okay. So now I'm going to create a button. I'm going to create the field button using auto layout. So before, um, okay, I would like to share a story. <laughs> before I started using auto layout, let me show you guys how mm -hmm. I make my buttons. I know. So first of all, like maybe I'll type in, um, let me just say proceed. I type in proceed. After typing in proceed, I take a rectangle. I draw a rectangle here. Then what I do, I take the proceed, put it in the rectangle, then bring the proceed forward. I bring it to the front. I bring it to the front. Then I group them together. So I group them together. So after grouping them together, I make sure they are properly aligned. 
So I click on the proceed to make sure it's properly aligned in the rectangle. So I do this. I do this, I do this. So while this button actually, it actually didn't make sense because I couldn't set constraints. Like if I want to make the um, width of the button wider, I'll have to do this. I'll now take the procedure. I'll now have to place it in the middle. Then I'll now make sure this one's white. Then I'll now make sure that, okay, well, ah, this um, proceed the word, the label has to be in the center. Let me check if it's in the center and up. Let me change the color so it will actually look like a normal word. So you guys can get what I'm talking about. Then I'll change this to white. So, then I'll give my rectangle um some radius like maybe eight so these are usually creates my buttons but then most times i usually like feel like a star that ah okay we've already created button and so far i look good in the eyes and all oh, once a um a developer sees this like it's it might not even be consistent because i might need this particular button in another place maybe actually smaller then i'll have to reduce here then is is actually looking messy and all. Then I'll now have to like increase this and all. So it's time wasting and all of that. So I'm going to show you how to create button using auto layout. So for this proceed, I'm going to actually duplicate this label proceed. Then I'm going to put it in an auto layout frame. I'm just going to click on, I'll use the shortcut, which is Shift A. So it's already in an auto layout frame. So now I'll give it some fill. Let me say blue. Then give it some radius. Let me say eight. Then I'll change the padding. Okay, so I didn't talk about um, padding. When you're creating a button, it's advisable to use auto layout and also give it some padding. So what I mean by padding is, let me say this is actually zero. This is actually zero. Like there's no written space at all. Let me change there, like no written space. You might actually, as in, it will confuse you, and you might even think that, ah, what is this? This is actually not a button. So padding helps to look, make the um, button look more presentable, and also to align for constraints. So align this now. I don't need to manually start checking and all. Okay. So now I can actually, let me set it to, for content, then I said this to center. So now I can actually do this by dragging it. If I want it to like fill the framework, so I can just drag this and that's it. Rather than manually doing this, checking, okay, it's 63 here, it's 63, it's 10 at the top and all. So that's it for field buttons. Then some people, they like some, they prefer it's like they give their corner radius, like the radius of the container 20, 10, 15, 20, 10, 15, 20. And also some people add shadows to their button. You can actually add shadows to your button. So you just click here. You just click on the drop down. You can actually give it a drop down shadow, and also, or if you want the shadow to be in the X axis, you can do that. And all. but it's advisable if you're giving um shadow in your button, it's advisable to pick the color, the main color, so that it can actually look better. So you reduce this.
So this actually looks better and it's actually better than this. My good button. So now we'll go into creating. This is a field button. Most times I know you guys have seen this button. I even use this, like this is the call to action button. You can actually use this for your main. This is your primary button. Let me just drop this. Then we're going to create an outline button using this field button. Outline button is ghost button. Let me show you what I mean by outlined. So for the ghost button or outline button, they usually don't have a film. It's just stroke. So you turn this off, then the stroke, then you change the text. You can, uh, hey, I forgot to mention, this is your eyedropper too. Rather than looking for the color or cramming the color code here, you can actually use this eyedropper too to pick it here, then you change the stroke to the same color of your text. So you, have, you can do the same thing, take it to. So this is your primary button, that's the field button. Then your secondary button. This is the outline of ghost button. So for these two buttons, you can actually use them on the same page. For um, let me say, for example, um, on a model, like you want to proceed or you want to go back. So for this one, <clears throat> you just change the text. Let me okay. Let me quickly do a model, and I know I actually explain how to do a model, but maybe in another section we'll do that. Um, coming. So let me say. Um, let's make this one bold. I'm just a semi bold. I'm going to take this. I know it might look somewhat like what is she doing and all, but let me just finish. Are you sure you want to? I'm going to reduce this. So I'm going to put this two in an auto layout frame, short cut or auto layout shift A. Then I'm going to make this space in between 24. Then let me just give this a few so you can actually see what I'm doing. Then yes, so I'm going to give this a pattern. Horizontal padding, I'll give it 24. I'll also give this 24. This I'm going to make it centered. Okay, so now I want to put these two buttons because you actually need this to cancel if you don't want to trash the post. Then if you want to trash the post, so I'll just change this to trash. So I'm going to reduce this, sorry. I'm going to reduce the size. Let me say 128, okay. Let me reduce this also to 128. So I'm going to put both of them in auto layout. So one, one thing about auto layout, the beauty of auto layout, this particular frame is already in, this is an auto layout frame. So you can just take anything 
and just put it in. But this is not how a button looks like. It's not supposed to be like this at all. It's not making sense. So what I'm going to do is already in a vertical direction. So I'm just going to change it to horizontal direction. So I'm going to reduce the padding to pin. So you can actually put this at the other side, at the left hand side, and this at the right hand side. So what I'm just going to, I'm going to click on this particular frame and just take it to this other side. So you can actually do the same thing, anyone wants. So we have two buttons here, which is the outline button and the primary button. So most times the um, outline button, which is the secondary button, they are also used to lay like emphasis, like a medium emphasis, because they actually, the user wants to trust the code. So this should be like the primary button here, and this is the secondary button here. So if this model is looking too big, is the size of the button, you can just reduce this to 100. Reduce this also to 100. Like I said, naming of your frame is important. So I'm going to name this model. I'm going to change this model's name from frame three to trash. Post. So maybe like you need a model later on and like, ah, okay, I've actually created a model before and it's trash code. So you can just click here and find the code. You just type in trash post. Then this is the, rather than creating another model from start and now, then you can just duplicate this and edit the text and everything inside to suit what you want. So that's it for now. Any question? Sorry, guys. I know maybe I was rushing and all oh, because of time. Because of time. So please, do you have any question? Hello, hello. Not for my age. Not for my age. Hello, any questions? I don't have any questions for my end, though. Okay. I, don't, I don't have any questions either. Oh, okay. Because of time, we won't be able to create like a sign up page or a login page because of time. This is already 451. So I just wanted to give you guys like a background to know how to create a button before using it in your file or your design files and all. That's why I started with that. Hello, Emmanuel. Yeah, thank cool. You. Thank you. I can oh, hear you. Okay. Thank you so much, to maybe. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, we all got um, maybe thing or two. Um, <clears throat> I've actually also used auto layouts in the past, and honestly, like, and I before I also discovered auto layouts, I was seeing things the same way you've been doing it, using rectangles and grouping them, grouping and uh yeah and auto layout is just it's just a lifesaver in in a lot of ways in a lot of ways with that you can set some variants easily and all that and thank you for bringing us giving us a background into the figma um the figma layout itself um where's the the the, the weight structured and 
how to use the auto layout um, option um, to make workflow easier. Thank, thank you so much. I really um, enjoyed the session. And I don't know if, I know everyone said they didn't have a question, but uh, might I ask, did we get any information from this session or is this something that we are read, you know, but how, how was the session? I would just like to get some quick feedback from people currently on this um, call. And so, I, I'm sorry, Manuel. I didn't okay. I didn't talk about the specs. So once this is done, you can actually check in the inspect okay. section. Then you can see the width of the frame. This will actually this helps um, developers to actually know the content and like everything concerning this frame, the properties. So you can see the width, the height, the form, the color used, CSS, and all. Um, yeah thank, thank you for that do maybe like i said when we were starting i said the figma is also important to people on the design course i don't know if there are people on the design i'm uh, sorry on the coding course i don't know if you have been one of them on the call but i mean with with the figma with the designs properly done you can get you can get some um properties that you can use for in actually developing that component out. And it also makes work easier and makes each uniform across board, yeah. So uh, thank you again for also showing that. Um, again, just to get some quick feedback from maybe two people, and I'm going to call, permit me to call people because of time. I'll say the first person, John, did you, did you learn something? Uh, how was the session for you? Okay, yes, sir, I did. And the section was um, very good and quite exposing. Although um, this is my very first time I'm coming across the whole Figma interface and how um, it operates. Yeah, I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually a graphic designer as well. So okay. some of the things that she said were quite relatable. Yes, mm -hmm. relatable. But, I had a few questions that are not related to what she thought. So that's why when she asked if I had questions. Okay, questions of this Figma. that she just thought about Figma. Questions of, for Figma, Figma, right? Yes. Okay, how, how about, I know yes, we are going to finish in five minutes, but we started like 10 minutes later anyways. How about we take some of, do maybe I up for it? How about we take some of, it may be one or two of those questions. If it's something you can answer on the call here, if it's not, we can also get back to you. And John, are you on any of our tracks? Are you on any of our courses or or you got this from um, from our social media? Just want to be sure. Hello, I'm, on the, I'm on the full stack program, so. Okay, you're on the full stack, okay. Okay, 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 cool. Um, so maybe yes, sir. I said I want to full stack program. Yes. Okay, maybe one or two questions. Um, and if something that we can quickly answer on the call, I, I think we can go ahead. So yeah, I think you can shoot any of the questions. Okay. All right. Um first question layout on Figma. Um, design for poses. Can you hear me? I can yes. hear you now. I can hear you. Okay, you can hear me now, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. I said whatever we design on Figma, on the um Figma environment, are they only meant for web design um purposes? I don't want to be applied for web designs. Do they or, or do they pass for some other sort of designings? Okay, like maybe flyers and all. Hello? Yes, yes, that's yes. that's what I'm trying to know. Like for flyer, what is what is your frame? Okay. Um what frame size do you use? Um uh sometimes sometimes an A4. Oh, I, I don't, because I saw um all this, yes, yes, paper, yes. Yeah, yeah paper. Yes, that's. A4, A5. Yes. Yes. 
Yes. Okay, that was that was the first question. Sorry, there are actually there are actually about three questions. The, um, the second question is when you decide when you decide on a particular frame size, yeah, because we have devices that make use of different frame sizes. Does that mean that whenever you design a particular page, you have to design it for a tablet, design it for a laptop, and design it for a phone? No, that's why we have um, auto layouts and or one particular design can. Well, you can actually use one Pascal. Okay, okay let so me say, that... yeah. Yes, I'm listening, please. Okay, so that's why you need to apply auto layouts and like set constraints on your design. So constraints allows you to create responsive design. Like there, there are rules you set on a particular, like um, on a certain part of your design so that they can change or move in a specific way you want it to do, then it resizes to that um, frame size. Okay, ma'am. Do you understand? Yes. Yes, I do understand. Do, do, you, do, you, do you actually understand and then, um, what I said? Oh, okay. Yes, I'm... Oh, okay, you're breaking, you're breaking. I'm sorry about that. Oh, no, it's fine. Hello. 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 I can hear you. I can hear you, John. Hello. Can, you hear can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can. Hmm. So I, I I think it's not okay. okay. Bye -bye. okay. 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 And then um the the last one uh, I don't I feel like I can find a you're working, John. So, or oh, John, do, do yes. you know what, I, I know that thing is so you're you're breaking up really, really pretty much. So another thing you can do, John, is you can type it up and send your question to me or or send it directly to at Dumebi or at Emmanuel or at Tolu Dufuna or any of the support guys, basically. You can send the question to us and, oh, okay. Yeah, send the call. Okay. Yeah. Um, let me just call on, okay. So because of time, I think we are past, yeah, we are five o'clock exactly, but let me just take one or two more minutes to just say, Another feedback. Edwin, can you hear me, please? And I, that, that's the last feedback I want to take. Edwin, yeah, okay. You, I can see you on the so how, how was the session? Do you get anything? Do you have any question? Are you used to Figma? Is this your first time seeing Figma and all that? Yeah, just some feedback, feedback for me. Oh, well, I joined in a little bit late, so but I joined in when you're talking about creating patterns. Okay. And then, yeah, I think from there I got some pretty interesting uh, ways to create buttons and using frames and all. But yeah, I've used I've used Figma before. I'm new to Figma. If maybe if possible, I'd like to have a link for for the recording because I missed a lot of things. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, we will upload the the session on YouTube on our YouTube channel. Um, it's not been uploaded for a while, but we will upload this session. And you can catch up on that session. And you are um oh, on what track are you on, please? The full stack track. The full stack track. Okay, so also um, coding. Yeah, so we, we will have the the up um we'll have the, the recording for this session uploaded to YouTube and you can catch up on there. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um Bao, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Um also quick feedback from you. Wow. Bravo, bravo, bravo. I'm not sure if that's. So, I can hear you. Okay. 
So any any feedback from the same same thing I've asked the others. Mm -hmm. How was the session for you? Did you get anything? Um, were you able to pick up new stuff? Yeah, it was it was it was a bit insightful, and I learned a couple of things. Yeah, I yeah. I, I have you used Figma before, or is this your first time seeing the? This is my first time seeing the interface. Okay, and what pro what program are you on this? Are you on design coding? Uh, front end development. Okay, you're on the front end track. All right. Cool. What? Yeah, I said you're on the front end track. Yes, I am. I am. I am. All right. Great. Great. Um. The, all right. Again, thank you. Okay, so um, John has left already again. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, um, sorry we didn't start on time. That was because we had people didn't really join in early. And uh, sorry we've taken extra time. We are about five, three minutes past five. But thank you so much. I I'm glad that everyone on the call was able to pick some things, especially for some people on the um, call most of the people on the call are not even on the design track and new to Figma, so being able to pick a couple of things on Figma and the understanding of the auto layout and all that. Thank you so much for joining this session, and thank you so much to maybe for taking time to speak to us today and bring us on up to speed in some basics of um, Figma. Thank you for your time. Um, Thank you again for the session and we'll have another session again, same time next week. And I think next week we'll have someone, a product manager speak with us. Yes, we have an external person speak with us, um, um, a product manager and um, we'll put out the announcement of that on Monday. And yeah, we hope to see you on the next meeting. Do have a wonderful weekend and on any of the courses that you are doing, on any of, any of the tracks that you are, please do not forget that we are here to help. So if you have any issues, if you have any questions, please speak up, speak out and reach out to us and you will definitely have those questions or those concerns resolved. Thank you so much, everyone. And we appreciate your time today. Have a lovely evening. and. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye, everyone. Bye.